Hello, this is our front lawn to edible garden conversion project. Um, we started this in late spring and we are now entering autumn, as you can see from the dappled light and the falling leaves. So this is going to be a harvest update. And besides that, I'm going to talk about a few different things. First up, we'll look at the juiciest part and the most important part and no cliffhangers today. We'll talk about the harvest of this area, the yield that we've gotten with compared to the um, amount of effort that we put in. Then after that, I'll have a more detailed look at the general idea behind the project and um, specifically the deep hay mulch that we used and whether or not it was effective. And lastly, I'll be talking about some of the plants that we'll be adding to these freshly prepared garden beds, getting ready for the winter, but keeping the production going. Well, this is it. Nothing more, nothing less. About 10 pumpkins from maybe eight plants, somewhere thereabouts, can't remember exactly. So that's not a very high yield, I would say. But also we have to remember that these pumpkins um, weren't planted in an ideal situation. They went directly into the lawn and they were shaded for most part of the day. So, they, and not to forget, they definitely did help suppress the grass. Not everywhere, but in some spots. So a, uh, a few pumpkins from that is uh, more than we could wish for. But then the potatoes definitely outperformed my expectations because this is a full bag, a full heavy bag that came from that area. And we started off with, I would say, half a bag as uh, seed potatoes, but then uh, a few of those went to the backyard project, which uh, there's another video of that one. Uh, so there's two more buckets, two more bucket loads of potatoes that you need to add to this. So that is definitely uh, what I would consider a, a small success. If we then have a look at the effectiveness of the hay mulch, on the left side here, here, you can see the part that wasn't mulched because we didn't have enough of the hay mulch. Um, in the middle here, you can see the part that was mulched later in the season. And also with a less thick layer or less deep layer of mulch. And then to the right here is the area that we started off with and is also the part that had the most production. If we then have a closer look in at, at the middle area, so the, the part that was mulched the latest and with the least amount of mulch. This is kind of what it looks like, zooming in. Uh, when I remove some of this mulch over here. One second. The soil is pretty much, well, the grass is pretty much gone and it's a nice, moist, rich soil, but nonetheless, to the left of that still there's plenty of patches where the grass came through and it's quite firmly established still so it's kind of patchy and we'll have to think about what we can do with that and a closer look at the older part shows a lot less grass coming through so that's partly because probably the mulch was a lot thicker and deeper on this side and so then if we move some of the mulch you can see it's still not complete decomposed. Nonetheless, after some digging, here we are. No grass, nothing, and pretty much ready to go. The final comparison, of course, is the potato bed. This is what it looks like. This is what the soil looks like. Heaps of soil life everywhere. We still have plenty of mulch, which I moved aside while whilst harvesting the potatoes and as you can see I still have a ways to go but other than the odd minuscule piece of grass that popped through and a few dandelions I would say this what was previously pure lawn like you can see over there is now a freshly prepared no dig garden bed because I've also found that the potatoes to harvest them you simply move some of the mulch aside and they are, there they are ready to be harvested 
ready to store or you know ready to eat pretty much the plants have been added to mostly the part where the potatoes were although it is uh, a little difficult to discern them because the ash leaves from this beautiful tree are falling so let's get a bit closer and then have a look at the plants that have been added we had a few odd parsnips which we still will had lying around basically um, that we added there's a, a row or two of black Spanish radish which is go along there then we have heaps of silver beet baby ones you can't really see them yet but there's a row along that side and then a row coming back through this side there's different kinds of brassicas so there's kale sprouting broccoli and maybe a few other random kale like plants and then lastly there's strawberries for example that one and there and there and a row again so we did kind of a traditional planting way of putting them in rows and the same kind of plants are on this side um, not much thought or planning went into the plants that we used over here other than the only criteria needing needing them to be able to cope with some night frosts which is m mostly what happens throughout the winter but other than that the winters are relatively mild so these plants should be able to cope with that and still grow although quite slowly um, and besides that it's basically plants that for example the strawberries that were donated uh, somebody had a, heaps of cuttings so we kind of grew them on and the kale and the silver beet oh no that's sorry that's not the silver beet uh silver beet <laughs> were plants from last season that we let go to seed and we basically grew them from seed that's why we have heaps of them and that's a very worthwhile thing to do to then summarize this project basically i'd say overall quite satisfied with the results interesting to learn that you need a, a deep enough layer of mulch to really suppress the grass which is basically what happened on this side and the potato bed was definitely the most successful because with quite little effort you have a no dig garden bed that's ready to plant out with follow-up crops although we'll have to see where they can establish and get through the winter to be a hundred percent success but nonetheless very worthwhile we still have a few plants that are uh, coming up so broad beans and whatnot that will continue to slowly work away towards the far end um, so yeah overall interesting project uh, uh, worth the effort very little effort quite some harvest and uh, definitely worth pursuing next season maybe even on a bigger scale and I hope that my rambling and uh, footage of this project helps you in one way or another uh, and at least for now I'd say thank you for watching and hope to see you next time